Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today what I thought I would do is swatch out the Daniel Smith luminescent paints that I recently purchased. And a few of you in my last video mentioned that you'd love to see these. These paints are quite interesting because they have a bit of a sheen and a shimmer to them. They're a great way to sort of add an interesting effect into your artwork. They are reasonably subtle, which is one of the things that I really like about these paints. They don't really stand out hugely. They just provide this lovely little extra glisten. So what I thought I would do here is swatch out all the colors that I got. So I'll quickly run through what they are and then I'll talk a little bit more about how I use them in my work. So in the duochrome range, I have aquamarine, oceanic, Autumn Mystery, which is actually one that I've had in my collection for a really long time. And it's one of my favorite colors. And I also have the hibiscus. And then I also have some iridescent colors. And iridescent colors are quite interesting. They have mica in them combined with the paint pigment. And they actually look really amazing on black paper, but you can also use them on ordinary paper too. So I'll swatch them out on both types of paper so you can see the difference. So in the iridescent range, I have moonstone and goldstone. So these are really like your quite typical silver and gold. And then I have sapphire and ruby. So let's get into the swatching and we can have a look at how they swatch on this watercolor paper. The paper that I am using is Archer's Cold Press and it's 300 GSM. I did have a little bit of a swatch of these in one of my sketchbooks and the colors weren't super vibrant, but then when I tried it out on the arches, you could really see the beautiful colors. So when you are testing out paints, keep in mind that the paper that you are using will impact the results. And as much as possible, I do like to test out colors on the paper that I use when I present and sell my work. So it's good to see how it will look on the more premium paper. So let's take a look at the first one, which is the duochrome aquamarine. So this one has a little bit of a blue coming through the turquoise aqua kind of base. So I'm using the watercolor straight out of the tube and just mixing in water to get it into a nice consistency. It does take a little bit of mixing to get these paints to be nice and well combined because they do have different kinds of things in them to give them that shimmer. You just gotta take your time with getting the color all nice and into a nice swatchy area that you can use. I should say a nice puddle. <laughs> okay, let's take a look. So this reminds me a little bit of Daniel Smith's Fuchsite Genuine, which is a really nice aqua color that I use quite a bit. So as it dries, we should start to see a little bit more of the blue coming through. Let's move on now to the Oceanic. So this one has a bit more of a green um, in it, but I swatched it out before and I was actually surprised at how similar the color is to this one when you lay it down. You'll see in a minute as I add it to the paper. So you can see how it has a little bit of that aqua feel to it, but with more of a warm green coming through. And all of these colors will show the shimmer once they are dry. So coming over now to my long time love, Autumn Mystery. So this is a color that I often mix into buff titanium to get a really nice peachy, um, creamy color. It's a real copper, so when you paint it straight, it has a lot, quite a lot of sparkle in it. It's a really beautiful color. It has a sort of like a hint of burnt sienna to it. And when you mix it into other colors, it can mute them down in a beautiful way as well. 
And then finally in the duochrome range, I've got this hibiscus pink color. And this would be a lovely one to mix into buff titanium to create a really beautiful pastel pink. Or you could even add a little bit of the uh, autumn mystery in as well to get more of a coral pink. I really like that. There's sort of a hint of mauve in it. It's very pretty. So let's move on to the iridescent colors. And then we'll also mix some of the colors together and have a look at some of the combinations that you can come up with. We'll have a go here with the moonstone. As you squeeze this one out, you can really see just how metallic it is. And with all these colors, you're going to get quite different effects depending on how much water you add to them. I've swatched them out fairly saturated so that you can really see the color. Um, but you can get lovely, soft, lighter colors just by adding more water. But you can really see how thick that is and metallic. It's got a real sheen as you mix it that you can see on the surface. So these um, iridescent colors, they're just like a little bit more metallic as you squeeze them out of the tube than the duochrome. So you can get quite um, good coverage with this. There's a bit of opacity in it. It's got a bit of warmth in it. It's kind of like a warm silver, which is really nice. It gives that earthy quality to it. All these paints have been designed with nature in mind. So they do have hints of earthy colors in them, which I really like. So let's have a look at the gold. again you've got that really nice variation in there almost like there's a bit of raw umber or something like that in there so it's not just straight gold okay on to sapphire it looks so beautiful coming out of the tube makes me think of birds this color beautiful vibrant blue feathers and that's definitely a subject matter that would benefit from these paints or flowers or any kind of animal that has high shine, fish scales, that sort of thing. And of course they look beautiful in abstract art as well, which is mainly what I'll be using them for. So again, you've got that feeling of an earthy color coming through in the blue. So it's a little bit more you know, muted than if you were just painting a straight up um, ultramarine blue or something like that. You've got this lovely sort of subtle earthy feel in there. Okay, finally, let's have a look at Ruby. This color looks like a really lovely lipstick color. So as they're drying, I'm just sort of having a look to see which one ones are shimmering the most. I still feel like Autumn Mystery has got one of the best shimmering effects. Um, the others are a little bit more subtle. The Moonstone though is starting to really give off strong metallic vibes. But sometimes you don't want, as I've said before, you don't want something that's really in your face. Oh, look at this color. This is really pretty. This is a little bit like Potter's Pink, but it's a little bit more vibrant and easier to apply. So with all of these colors, you can have some fun mixing them together. And down the bottom here, I just wrote down some mixes that I wanted to try. So I am going to mix together these two, the Autumn Mystery and the Hibiscus. Um, let's take a look at those first, just to get a kind of more of a coral color by mixing the orange of the Autumn Mystery into the cooler pink. So you can see how you've created another pink here 
So we have the autumn mystery, which is very copper, this, which is a deep sort of rosy pink, and then something in the middle here, a little bit more coral. So you can get a whole lot of variation just through mixing your colors. So let's try another one with the oceanic mixed with the gold stone. So the oceanic already has a bit of gold in it, but I thought it would be interesting to amp it up a little and get a bit of a khaki green color. So this would be a lovely color for painting various kinds of plants and botanicals and things like that. Uh, what else have we got? Sapphire and ruby, so that's these two colors. So you can see on my palette two variations there of those two colors mixed, one with a little bit more of the sapphire, one with a bit more of the ruby. I'm going to paint this one that's a little bit more of a purple. This is a really beautiful lavender color. And all of the mixes that I've made, they're just a little bit more muted. So this is a way you can get even more muted and neutralized colors. Particularly if you like working with softer palettes. So the last mix I have here is the aquamarine mixed with some of the moonstone, so the silver. So with all of these mixes, you know, you can decide how much of each color you want to put in depending on what way you want to lean. So with this one, I think I want to lean a little bit more towards the aquamarine. And so I've just got a touch of silver in here. The great thing about using something like an Archer's paper is that you do have a lot of working time when you're mixing your colors and creating your swatches. You can really fiddle around with the color and add more in without it drying. So you can blend it all out, just like I've been doing here. When I decided I wanted to add a little bit more silver into it. And I did that because I, um, I wanted to get a bit more variation from the colors that I had already laid down. So these are starting to dry and I could see here at the bottom here, the oceanic and the gold stone, it's drying with a lovely mottled effect and a lot of variation in the color. Um, so that's one of the things that you can get when you combine two paints together. And these are two slightly different types of paints. One is the duochrome and the other is the iridescent. So it's creating a quite interesting effect. So while this is drying, I'm going to get the black paper out and just show you a few of the colors on black because the iridescent colors in particular show up in a completely different kind of way on black paper. So let's have a look at that. So for this, I'm using a mixed media sketchbook. This is the Stillman and Byrne Nova series, and it comes with three different types of paper in it. So you could experiment with other colors as well. So there's a silver paper or a gray, let's say a gray, and then there's a sort of beige as well. So we're gonna stick with the black though, and let's have a look at these iridescent colors. I always question how to spell iridescent. <laughs> Moonstone. And then we've got goldstone, sapphire, and ruby. So I'll just squeeze a little bit more out so that we get the pure color because I have been mixing these ones on the palette. So I'm using these straight out of the tube, but if you wanted to, you could squeeze these into a palette and then let the palette dry and use them as if you were using pans. So that is an option and that can be a good way to not use as much paint. Um, but I do like the ease of just mixing up large puddles of paint using them straight out the tube. So now you can see they look really different on black to what they do on a white paper. You can really see those 
mica particles on the black. And it's sort of like it sits on top of the black paper. It really soaks into the archer's paper. Uh, let's try the sapphire. I don't really work with black paper much, but if I did, I would certainly have fun incorporating some of these colours into the artwork for sure. Gouache works quite well on black paper too. I really like this ruby colour. It's just a really nice pink. So, and it looks lovely on the black paper. I'm curious if any of you work on black paper or different coloured papers rather than just straight up white and what your experience of that is and what type of art you make. It might inspire me to play around a little bit more with using different coloured papers. Um, there are some artists that work on coloured paper um, with various mixed media supplies that you know, it can really look lovely having a different kind of base. So it's something to think about. So there you can see those four on the black paper. And I would imagine that once these are dry, they're gonna be even more sparkly. Um, but let's bring in the other, the other sheet, because I think this will be almost dry now. And you can have a look at the colors. Loving all of these. Um, there's definitely a few that I can see myself incorporating into my paintings. Actually, to be honest, I really like all of them. This sapphire blue is really lovely. I can imagine painting flowers with that blue color. Um, or as I said before, birds, it would be really nice to add into their feathers. The ruby color is gorgeous. The hibiscus is beautiful. Um, out of these two, I'm not sure. Um, they, I thought they were quite similar at first, but they really are different. They're different enough definitely to have both. This one leans towards the blue. This one has much more um, of a warmth to it with the gold in there. All in all, it's a really good uh, selection that you could do a lot with. So um, let me know which one is your favorite or whether you have used any of these colors in your artwork or perhaps there are other ones in the range that you could suggest and, and talk a little bit about. Um, they are really interesting colors to work with and I love adding them into my paintings, um, particularly when I am working in a mixed media style that incorporates watercolor with all sorts of other things like pens and pastels. And I'm really going for creating interesting combinations of materials. And this just feels a little bit more interesting sometimes and exciting compared to some just straight up colors. Although I do have to say, I love Daniel Smith uh, paints in general because they are so beautifully pigmented and vibrant. So if you are curious to know a little bit more about how I use these paints in conjunction with those supplies that I mentioned, I do want to just mention that I am about to open up registration for my Modern Mixed Media e-course. This is a six week course that I run at several times during the year. What's different about this course to my other courses is that we do it as a group. So the content comes out each week for six weeks. There's a Facebook group, it's very engaged, and we all share and support and encourage each other as we explore different ways of using watercolor with mixed media. And we cover different styles. So there's botanicals, abstracts, textural pieces, different kinds of substrates, mediums, all sorts of stuff in there. So it's a really interesting approach to watercolor and mixed media. And there has been some amazing student creations and student journeys that have come out of the course. So I'm always really excited to start it again and, and to meet people and engage with people in that way. Because inevitably it always gives me a real boost in my own art practice. And as I mentioned in my last video, I have been working with acrylic quite a bit in the last few months, but I am feeling really excited about getting stuck into watercolor work, which really is my first love. I fell in love with watercolor because it enabled me to make art when making art felt hard because I was busy and I had a lot of family commitments and things like that. And it just feels very easy to be able to get watercolor out and you know, have a little bit of a painting session. It's easy to clean up and put away. And for that reason, it will always be 
a really important part of my practice and an important part of something that I love to share with others because I feel like anyone can get started with this type of art. So I think I've said enough about that, but I did just want to mention it. I hope that you have really enjoyed seeing these colors swatched out. Let me know um, if you'd like to see more of this type of video or other video ideas that you might have. So thanks again for tuning in and I hope that you'll join me again next time.